Hey guys, the people have spoken, so here's the how-to video. Let's tear this thing apart and show you how I built it. Okay, let's start off by describing the case. So I wanted this solar generator to be super rugged, and so you have to start with a super rugged case. And uh, I found this uh, large ammo crate on Amazon. It's an MTM brand um, ammo case, and uh, it has some two two really large clamps on the front that uh, are super heavy duty. On the inside, you can see that there's a rubber gasket. It gives a good uh, water tight seal, and uh, there's plenty of room for a 35 amp hour battery and the charge controller along the bottom. The other thing I really like about this case is this handle. Um, it's super strong and uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to break or not flimsy at all when you're carrying around this 30 pound case. So now about the battery. This is a 12 volt 35 amp hour battery. It's a sealed lead acid battery and uh, it uh, definitely gives me all the power that I need. Um, so I'll leave um, the links to both of these parts and all the rest of the parts in the description below. Okay, so describing the install of this front panel here, um, basically what I did is I took and taped down this frame um, that uh, this part came with. And uh, I centered, and I, I just centered it how I wanted it, taped it down, and then I put a Sharpie dot in each one of these three holes. And then I took a inch spay bid and just drilled out um, these holes. I did the same for this switch here, this momentary switch here, and I dremeled out the hole for this. And this just snaps right in. So I have a hole here, 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 and here. Basically, um, super easy to do just with a drill bit, uh, a spade drill bit. Um, just have different sizes and uh, the inch wasn't exactly perfect for these so what I had to do is just use a Dremel and sand a little bit out so that uh, these would snap in there nice and tight. After they fit um, I installed each three, all three of these, snapped uh, the cover on and then screwed it in. And uh, that's how the front is. It's a super easy installation. Um, I tried to take this off um, but with all the wiring and uh, you know how crazy of a wiring mess it is it just would have been too much work to take this off so hopefully this will satisfy the people that are wanting to know how I did this and uh, yeah we'll go on to describe more okay guys so let me go ahead and explain the inside of the battery box so the piece of wood here um, it is actually 12 and a half inches long in total and seven and a quarter inches wide. Um, the cutout for the battery is seven and five eighths inches and it is five inches wide. And so that actually just sits perfectly inside the box. I mounted the solar charge controller to a piece of aluminum um, and then just use some wood screws and that is mounted on the piece of aluminum just to kind of take some heat away from the charge controller and that is how the battery is mounted okay so the wiring in here is going to look complicated um, but I did draw out a wiring diagram and it's not that complicated um, so basically what you see here is a positive and negative terminal going to each device. So over here, this is the this is the 12 volt port and uh, have a positive and negative terminal. This is the momentary switch is right under here and then the voltmeter, positive and negative terminal, and then the USB ports, positive and negative terminal. Uh, my main power switch is right here. So if I kind of just pull out the charge controller a little bit, um, Sorry for the shaky video. So you can see that I actually tied all the negatives together. 
and uh, this terminal right here connects straight up to the negative terminal on the battery. Hopefully that's a little bit better for you. All the positive terminals coming off the devices hook in to the main power switch here and here. So you have one, two, and three. And then this um, goes to the charge controller. So I can disable the charge controller because I don't want to drain the battery. So when I have this main switch on, I just turn off the charge controller unless I'm charging the device. Um, so yeah, um, I do have a diagram for this that explains this way easier than I can just show in a video. So um, let's go ahead and check out uh, the wiring diagram now and I'll, I'll explain that a little bit better. Okay guys, let's go over the uh, wiring diagram for the solar generator. And I apologize for the background noise. Um, I don't have a super good mic and it actually is picking up the AC running in the background. So you'll probably hear, it sounds like a fan going, but yeah, the AC is running in the background because it's pretty hot here. So let's go over um, the voltmeter first because it's kind of independent of everything else. I wanted the voltmeter to connect directly up to the battery terminals. Um, so you can see it's just positive negative wire go right into the voltmeter and they connect up the battery. Um, the problem with that is it's running all the time when it's connected to the battery so I wanted a way to turn that off to save, bat uh, to save you know, power. So I installed a momentary switch in line with the positive wire and so what that does is when I push the switch it activates the voltmeter and when it's not pushed it's not pulling any power so it's not wasting any electricity. So that's how the voltmeter works. Um, it's on the front of the box and the little silver button underneath is where the momentary switch is installed. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the solar charge controller because it's probably the most complicated thing in the box just because it has a lot of inlets for wires. So on my solar char charge controller there is a solar panel in, a battery in, and a load in. Um, basically it's it's pretty simple if this was outside of the box I just plug my solar panel in here plug the battery in and be good to go but to make it more convenient um, and to save power I've done a few other things so let me explain that um, on the front of my solar generator there's a port um, for s the solar panel to plug into and it just goes straight into the solar panel so positive to positive negative negative um, there's nothing um, in the way of this, these wires, so that's super simple. Um, and then what you do is you just take the positive and negative of your battery and hook that straight up. But the problem with that is your solar charge controller is always running. And I didn't like that because when my solar panel wasn't plugged in, my charge controller was on just wasting power. So what I decided to do was to, to put a couple switches in here on the positive line and so one of the switches is just to disable power to the solar charge controller so when I'm not charging anything I just flip the switch and um, it disables the charge controller but because the switch is behind everything else it, uh, it doesn't affect the USB ports or the 12 volt port so if you look at this wiring here it's just simple positive line um, and all the positive connections for the USB ports and for the 12 volt port connect straight in uh, right behind this main power switch. This main power switch is the switch that's on the front of the device, uh, the solar generator, and this other switch is just inside. And it's just super easy to turn on and off. Um, along the positive line, I also installed a 20 amp fuse and this is just for safety so that I don't fry any thing or electrocute myself somehow. So then um, along the negative line um, it just goes directly to the battery but uh, what I decided to do is take the negative wires from the 12 volt port and the USB ports and just tie them directly into the same battery wire and then they all hook up to the negative terminal. 
So the negative is probably the the negative line is the easiest line out of this whole thing. It's just all of them tie in together and then hook directly to the negative terminal. The positive wire is a little bit more um, complicated just because it has an inline fuse and two power switches. Um, I decided to skip this load option on the solar charge controller. Um, my solar charge controller tracks how many um, amps have been used, uh, amp hours and watts and things like that, and I just didn't want my solar charge, con charge controller running all the time, so I just avoided this and just hooked everything directly up to the battery. Um, my USB ports, um, the wiring that they came with, they just came with this 18 gauge wire. Um, if you order the same kit, um, it'll come with everything that you need. Um, and for the 12 port, uh, the 12 volt port, I used uh, 12 gauge wire. Um, just I knew I'd be pulling a little bit more amps out of this 12 volt port, so I decided to use a little bit thicker wiring. Um, that's basically everything about um, the the wiring diagram. Uh, the main power switch just disables everything. It disables the the ports and uh, the USB ports, the 12 volt port, just so there's no power being used. Uh, the USB port has a constant blue light when it's on, so I just didn't want that running at all. So when I flop uh, this, this switch, it just kills power to everything, and then I, that's kind of what I have it when it's in storage. Um, the 35 hour, no, the 35 amp hour battery has been uh, really good. Uh, I just went on a five day camping trip, and uh, basically uh, running cell phones, um, white noise apps on the cell phones at night uh, to keep baby asleep, charging phones, charging flashlight batteries, uh, 18650s, you know, the larger lithium ion batteries. Um, this thing was able to do it all. Um, we also had a 12 volt fan. It's an O2 cool fan. Um, it just runs off 12 volts and uh, or has batteries and I didn't want to waste batteries so I just hooked it directly to this and uh, we were able to run that fan for eight hours and the voltage was still super high on the battery so I'm guessing it's hardly pulling anything at all but uh, wake up in the morning and uh, just put the solar panel out and within two hours everything was charged up again so uh, you know if you're looking to do something similar but with more battery uh, storage or with more more um, solar wattage um, definitely use this as a starting ground and just just build from there um, another option that I may want to do in the future is just use uh, just be able to have a way to directly hook a power inverter directly to the positive and negative terminals so then I could power a couple AC appliances um, with a 35 amp hour battery you probably can't power too many things very long the battery on it says that um, it shouldn't pull more than 10.5 amps out of it because it's uh, it's not a high amperage battery, it's more of a slow drain battery. Um, so I wouldn't be pulling a ton of stuff out of it, but um, you know, things that were super useful, I, I plugged my um, air mattress pump into this and pumped up the air mattress in like you know a minute and a half. So super easy and convenient to have this whole setup so I definitely re recommend if someone was wanting to build one of these um, for camping it just makes camping so much more enjoyable because you have that power that's available there instead of having to go to your car and constantly charge stuff in the car or blow up um, your air mattress by the car and then walk into your tent I mean you just put this in the tent and you got all this power sitting there so super awesome if you guys have any questions or comments just let me know um, I'll go ahead and just do a quick uh, overview of everything put back together and uh, hopefully uh, this uh, how-to video was pretty explanatory on how this was built. Okay, so just do a final overview. Got everything hooked back up. Um, you can see that I have the uh, positive wires, everything coming off. Uh, the main power switch hooks up to the fuse and then to the positive battery terminal. Um, the other wire over there is for the voltmeter. 
And then uh, here I have all my negative wires hooked up and they're tied into a twisty tie or twist terminal. You can kind of see all those tied in there. Um, as you can see, the um, solar charge controller is running off of the battery right now. So it's just wasting power. So that's why I have this switch in here and just turns it off. Um, go ahead and turn the main power switch on and then you can see that uh, you have power. Um, get rid of that blue light so it'll focus. Kind of crappy lighting. Um, and you can just see that that turns it on. Um, but it's, it's not too complicated. Um, I feel that uh, if everyone kind of plans it out and uh, designs it to work for them, um, it's something that you can definitely do and it's something that's super useful. Um, so yeah, thanks guys for watching the video. It was a longer video, but I really wanted to show how this was built so that people could start uh, making one themselves or getting ideas from how this is set up so that they can uh, come up with their own projects. So yeah. If you guys uh, like this video, please uh, subscribe for more and I'll keep the content coming. Have a great day.